What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counterpunch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. Now, by popular demand, a lot of people, you know, keep me on my toes. I like subjective people. I like to bring on different questions and different uh, opinions of different people. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't really have a talkative platform. This channel would be boring. And there are people that ask me about <clears throat> Wilder and Joshua when Deontay Wilder called out Anthony Joshua back in June of 2016. Okay. Now, Deontay Wilder to Anthony Joshua, let's do it now. When Deontay Wilder was 35 and 0, okay, uh, th sorry, 36 and 0 with 35 KOs, he wanted to make a unification with uh, Anthony Joshua at that time so he could become uh, the unified champion. So the IBF and the WBA, I mean, sorry, the IBF and the WBO. You know, along with the WBC at this fight, had this fight taken place at that time, he would have had those belts had he beat Anthony Joshua. And this is before the Klitschko fight, because, of course, that didn't happen until about eight or nine months later when he fought Klitschko. Now. And people ask me like, hey, man, well, why you why don't you talk about this much? Well. In this article, um, I'm reading. Deontay Wilder wanted that fight. He wanted that fight. Let's do it now. Okay. This is before don't wait, make the date. Don't wait, make the date came in the uh, last quarter of 2017. Okay. When he was like, don't wait, make the date. Now, what's strangely about this is you got a guy that's, you know, he called out Joshua. He did a young guy. Um, that he, at the time Joshua was 17 and 0 with 17 KOs. Okay. And Joshua at that time was not ready for someone like Deontay Wilder, which was okay. You know, it was okay because if you're 17 and 0 and 17 knockouts, I mean, that was an impressive resume. That's what made the heavyweight division so really like, damn, you got Joshua over here just knocked out Martin. But then. He wasn't ready to fight Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder was 36 and 0 at the time. You know, now I am curious because I, you know, I think on all sides. What fight, how would that fight came if Joshua would have took that challenge when he was 17 and 0? You know, what type of fight would that have been? Would Deontay blew him out of the water, hit him, just came up to him and ah, hit him with that right hand, and that would have been it. And he would have took the IBF and the WBO belts home back over to the States here. You know, or would it have been like a Klitschko fight where they went back and forth and it was not multiple knockdowns of two guys that were undefeated that was determined to win? You know, those are the questions that I that go through my mind. You know, just the love of boxing and what are the possibilities of could what could have happened. But based on Wilder, he says, since you've hey, since the winner. This is memory lane, people, okay? This is June 25th of 2016. He says, uh, Deontay says, Eddie Hearn said sooner than later, let's make it sooner. Now, hashtag Wilder Joshua. He says, since the winner has time, you have planned on at Tyson Fury. Hey, it's time to make your American debut at Anthony Joshua. So, what Wilder wanted him to do is come over to the States and have that unif unification fight here. He wanted that here. He didn't want that in the UK or anything like that. Now, a strange thing happened, or should I say was happening at the same time. You know, Charles Martin, also an undefeated heavyweight champion, came over, received $8 million to come over to fight Joshua. Joshua took the low end of that money because Joshua was not a champion, okay? He fights um, 
Charles Martin knocks him out in two rounds. Okay. And one thing that was apparent, Joshua was becoming a star over there. Eddie Hearn knew it, right? Deontay Wilder later on found out in 2017. But in 2016, I have to say that they didn't want any of Wilder at the time. You know, now, if you got a guy that's 36-0 and 0 with 35 knockouts, he, he's ready to make that fight happen. The question you ask yourself is why? Why would you want that fight now when you didn't want the Charles Martin fight when Charles Martin was over there to you? Now, that's a question you, do, you, you have to ask yourself because he's the other American champ. We had two American champs. We had Charles Martin and we had Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder with the with the massive sledgehammer right hand. Charles Martin was a southpaw, which was 6'5", you know, which he was like the lesser of the evils, okay? Now, you could argue that Joshua picked the easier opponent. You could argue that, and, you know, I couldn't argue with you because they because what it looks like now since Charles Martin has been beaten by Adam Kalnaki and his, how his career ha has worked out versus what Deontay Wilder has really done, and he hasn't lost. So by default, you're like, okay, cool. You know, even though you could argue back and say, hey, well, shit, Deontay Wilder has not fought Anthony Joshua nor uh, Adam Kalnaki. <laughs> you could argue that, but it's a safe bet to say that Deontay Wilder is, the be is, is better out of those two. However, I do want to see a Wilder Charles Martin fight. I want to see that fight because Charles Martin is an ex champion. What could he do against someone like Wilder? You know what I mean? It's a fight that I do want to see anyway. Moving on. In 2017, yeah, this was, was actually, this is what Wilder wanted in 2016. Now, after the Klitschko fight, we didn't have the same type of energy, people. We didn't have these damn tweets right here. We didn't have that. And in fact, <clears throat> after the Klitschko fight, do you know who was commentating that fight? I keep having to remind people who was the commentator in that fight at ringside, Deontay Wilder. He actually did a good job to me. You know, and he was just like, hey, these guys are trying to impose their game plan. You know, Joshua, they're two warriors in there. You know, he was, he was what I remember Deontay Wilder being. You know what I'm saying? I remember Deontay Wilder was a little like he was more, uh, he was calm. He looked like he was nicer. He looked like he didn't have the, the ego at that time. And even in these tweets here, it wasn't nothing derogatory. You, you heard no pussy, no coward, no this, no that. You know what I mean? You heard like, hey, it's time for you to make your American debut at American at, at Anthony Joshua. OK, so he was he was trying to get that done. That was in 2016 and 17 after Joshua took the throne from uh, 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 um, Vladimir Klitschko. Right. There was no call out from Wilder. You know, if Wilder was who Wilder perceived to be now, like the bronze bomber, he would have went, I think he would have, if he would have had that same energy that he has now versus then, that he would have done something, climbed into the ring or called out or at least had interviews like, look, I'm, I'm ready to fight whoever that winner is. I want Klitschko. I want Joshua. I want whoever wins because I am the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it's one of those situations where, yes, in 2016, he was calling Anthony Joshua out. Maybe he was, jo he was low hanging fruit. Maybe he was too green at that time. Maybe Deontay Wilder and his handlers and Team Wilder knew it. You know, that's my reasoning for it. You know, there was not a push to fight Deontay Wilder at the time because then you could, order, you could argue, well, man, he fought Klitschko. Did Wilder fight Klitschko? No. Did Wilder want the fighter or the winner out of Klitschko, Joshua? No. We didn't hear him claim that. We didn't hear him call that out. We didn't hear him make tweets like this. Okay, he didn't make tweets like this. 
in 2017. He didn't make those type of tweets. Now, after he beat Stavern the second time and knocked him out, he then called out Anthony Joshua. When what? When Joshua was not there. But when he did call him out, negotiations started. And guess what? They have been gone on through that time to this day. This very day, those negotiations are still coming forth. Okay? Now it's the Saudi Arabia possible fight. The winner, you know, if Deontay wins, boom. Right? The negotiations have never stopped. So someone like Deontay Wilder saying, hey, he's scared, he's a coward, he's a pussy, he's heartless, he's not this guy, I told people about him. That's only him building up the fight, I think. That's only him keeping himself relevant. That's only him promoting his own fight because everybody really wants to see another fight, not the fight that he is in now. So as long as you know that the fans want to see another fight, what are you going to do? You're going to talk about the possibility of another fight or talk about in derogatory terms of the fighter that everybody wants you to fight, which is Anthony Joshua. That's bottom line. So from this time, from June 25th to 2020 of January, we have totally different shifts in energy. Okay? We had him, yeah, I want to fight him in, in, in the middle part of uh, 2016. By the early part of 2017, by the, first, the end of the first quarter of 17, after the Klitschko fight, he did not have that. He did not have that same energy. He was there with both guys. He was there. He gave Anthony Joshua a fist bump. That's the only communication that was recorded that he had with Anthony Joshua. It was shifted. Then 17, he wanted them again. Then 18, oh, I want this, but no, it's slave wages. That ain't enough. But then we found out how much you made. It contradicted what you said that was slave wages. See, all this stuff is a pattern. It's, you know, it's like this. Deontay's energy is like this. It's like, you know, 18, he only wanted Fury. What? Why? You already knocked Fury out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And right after that, no, I, I'm going to turn down a massive amount of money to fight on a network to stay with another, another network claiming you're free, but then you go back to that network. That's facts. They offer you a certain amount of money to stay there. It might have been clever because he did receive $20 million, but that wasn't for the, the Brazil fight alone. That was for him to stay his ass at home. Okay? So let's just be real about that. And then once those numbers came out on that fight, boom, they dropped them. You know, that's loyalty for you. That's job security. You know what I mean? That's why you should bet on yourself. What he said was actually an oxymoron because he didn't do what he said that he was going to do. Betting on himself meant he should have taken that deal. We all know that. But this explains from the call outs that Deontay Wilder wanted. And let's drop this in there. Do you think Deontay Wilder would have fought a, a, a Tyson Fury in condition and well in condition? Because he was the one that said Tyson Fury will never come back. He's too far gone. Now you're fighting him. Now I know he justifies justifies the two uh, tune-up fights. But those weren't fights that are with guys that were high caliber. In fact, Tyson Fury ain't fought another guy of high caliber since he fought Deontay Wilder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And no, Braun Strowman does not count. He's not a fucking boxer. So, this concludes the memory lane recap of Deontay Wilder's callouts of Anthony Joshua. You guys tell me what you think, of course. Please subscribe, leave your comments below, and you guys have been Counterpunch. Peace.